Hello YouTube, Brady on. Uh, Missed Report newsletter subscribers. Missed Report Tutor program subscribers. This is Terrell from Terrell03.com. Today is Sunday, March 13th, 2022. It is 1256 p.m. Central Time here in the Ozarks. And Missed Report number two for 2022 has been put together and uh, using questions from from supporters and um this is this is only the second missed report in some time and there was such a response to the first one that was done since last year that uh i really wanted i almost closed the windows and went and laid down somewhere but after uh, spending time putting this together i want to get it out to you guys this uh, for those that are unfamiliar then this newsletter program is all about helping people see god's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit water and blood testifying in the holy scriptures from genesis 1 1 through revelation god's three witnesses are everywhere once you see them and see the pattern it changes everything so before i even get started as the basics really really basics for somebody that's brand new then i, I highly recommend you're interested in seeing god's wisdom you, you want to see it then go to terrell03.com right over here and go down the page to the scripture section right here watch these six videos in order and by this last one god's true bible code this is a this is how the mystery diagrams work once you see how the mystery diagrams work spirit blood and water then when you're going through the mystery explained and seeing the diagrams then you're gonna you're gonna see the pattern much easier so for those that are brand new to this then let's start right here this is very early on in the book and this is uh, God's key this is the cipher for breaking the code right here in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth it's really that simple spirit blood water so these three are testifying God his word incarnate and creation incarnate testifying in Genesis 1 1 in the perfect ages so um I probably should pull up the Big Bang theory of creation is a myth many believe that Big Bang is where this create this universe was created but in reality this is the Big Bang is where the previously existing universe the earth of Genesis 1 1 was destroyed then God reconstituted from the broken remains what we see today. So this diagram is going to transition into three witnesses. This God has three witnesses. This heaven, or the word of Genesis 1, 1, of, of John 1, 2, has three witnesses. This earth has three witnesses testifying in their, their spirit, blood, and water, and they all have the same pattern. So let me pull up diagram number two. God is left in the singularity expression here. And heaven and earth are created. Remember, this is the only realm that's real. This is a created realm, and this is a created realm actually within this realm. So this is the man of God here. God's three witnesses, Revelation 1.8. God to come, God who is, God who was. Spirit, blood, water. The blood witness always, in every single case in the whole Bible, testifies for the original singularity so when God is speaking for example in Genesis 1 1 let us make man God who is is speaking to God to come and God who was his prophet and his priest the word is heaven my father who art in heaven gets his name from heaven of Genesis 1 1 the word incarnate the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Paul characterizes as Christ Jesus. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our one mediator between God and men. And then the earth. See, this is Matthew 28, 19. These three witnesses from Genesis 1, 6 through 8. Heavens, the waters above the firmament. Earth, the waters below the firmament. And the heaven the expanse or the firmament depending on your translation Genesis 1 8 
So there's a heaven here, and there's a highest heaven. That's here. Heaven here, highest heaven here. Okay, now the next diagram. Well, this is a this is in the Mystery Explained. It's on the back cover, actually. It's in the book and in the back cover, showing what I just showed you. Three witnesses of God, three witnesses of the Word, three witnesses of this creation. And then you get into the temple, and you get to the Holy of Holies. It has three sections of spirit, blood, water, the same exact way. Two veils, just like there are veils. And then the priest on the inside. He has a spirit, a soul, and a body. A holy place. God in Christ and Christ in you. And then the bread. God's work. My work, the mystery explained, and then your work that enlarges in between. In every case, each of these blood witnesses enlarge. Then pulled up some more of the intro. There are 80 color-coded diagrams in the mystery explained. These are just a few of them. So this is a diagram that shows the three witnesses of Scripture. The Old Testament, 39 books. Pauline Epistles, 13 books. Kingdom Epistles, 13 books. Based on the number 13, that's the number of the steward. Peter, John, and James get three witnesses. Three and nine, that's the twelve. Put Christ in the middle. Thirteenth apostle. Thirteenth witness. And that number thirteen is the number of the steward, like Paul is a steward of the dispensation of God's grace. Uh, Moses is the steward over Israel of the flesh, giving them Mosaic law. Then Elijah is a steward over the those in the kingdom dispensation about to, about to begin. It started with John the Baptist, and then it was put in abeyance, held, put on the back burner, and it's going to start up again as soon as we're taken. So Scripture has the same pattern as the tabernacle, which is the anatomy of a man. We're going to get more into that and uh, we get into one of these questions. Then more complicated diagrams. They start off very simple and then they get more complicated. This is the Old Testament prophets looking over into the day of the Lord. They see very clearly. They don't see anything inside this mystery period. It's guarded by the two veils. This is where the mystery is revealed. And this is what's going on in heaven above, and this is what's going on in the highest heaven above. For those of us with spiritual eyes from God to see, we can look upwards and look inwards and see these things. And then, this is uh, kind of from the earth. This is what God's doing in Christ Jesus. And in the book, in the Mystery Explained, it, it explains how the second veil is actually wrapped around his throne, like a typewriter ribbon, kind of. The lamb is doing what God's doing up here. And David is doing on the earth what the lamb of God's doing here. The tabernacle is spread over. The tabernacle is spread over. The tabernacle is spread over. In many cases, Scripture gives us only two of the three witnesses. Christ says it all the time. He gives you the blood witness and the water witness. It doesn't give you the spirit witness. You're supposed to figure that out once you see the three witness mystery sets. So scripture is multidimensional. It's a living, the only living document. It is heaven incarnate in a book. And whenever you see these patterns, it is really a miraculous thing. More and more of you probably should listen to, uh, provide a list of the questions and answers, just one sentence. A lot of you guys are writing me questions. Where'd you get this stuff? And who taught it to you? Well, this is, I cannot take credit for what's in the Mystery Explained. It's not my stuff. It's God's stuff. So God just showed it to me. He's been showing it to me since I was little. Why? I don't know. He put his hand on my shoulder and said, here, son, look at this. Wow. So now when God chooses you to see it, just look up in my book. Then you, we dissect and trisect the definition, true definition of the Greek term mysterion. Something that's kept secret, hidden, and revealed. So after Christ was raised from the dead, then God gave all the information about the mystery through Christ to Paul, who is the steward of the dispensation of God's grace, what's going on in the world right now. So that's the last of the introductory diagrams before we get into 
what's in this what's in this newsletter appreciate you guys sending the your questions and things so when you get your hands on one of these newsletters then this is an interview from 2019 crystal power she was interviewing me she did a couple Royce bless his heart really love Royce back in 2015 he was interviewing me quite often here are two of those that were found I found those and added them to the newsletter and then this is the radio series that John this is from awakened radio 2012 it begins at the beginning and there's a series of 21 and the black star reports and other things are edited out John did a wonderful job you have access to that when you get your hands on a newsletter then we had for briefly just before the pandemic then uh, you can see the dates here and then I moved from Florida and came up here and then had a terrible internet connection and my time was all taken so but here are some uh, links to make videos of chat sessions that we had that they're very valuable and this is the song that I shared recently a guy with a great voice from over in Europe lost his job put his hat out started singing and man that guy can read this guy right here look at his name and Google him he could this guy right here he can really sing he bring tears to your eyes okay so we we'll just start off and um, thank you to Clint and to uh, Peter and Peter I want to introduce you to uh, another member of Christ's body that's a uh, supporter you've been introduced to David my brother from other mother David he's not my real brother but he's like my brother and uh, Don and Gary they've asked me a lot of questions and they are probably the, the leaders of the pack and seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight using his three witnesses of spirit blood and water they've asked me tons and tons of questions about all this and so they've been connected with Peter and if you guys are interested in, in hooking up and joining together the tutor program members if you're interested in doing that please be a tutor program member then maybe you guys can get a chat room or something like that I cannot promise to be the leader of the pack on those kind of there's just so much going on and already working 80 hours a week and longer sometimes so to add more on my plate is going to be really difficult but if you guys want to connect together and then when I can especially when all my prepping's done and especially if we have another orbit cycle then maybe I'll be able to join in with you this once you start seeing these things this is you're like a kid with a new toy and it God opening himself up and showing you the more you try, you want to help other people the more God wants to open up the doors for you you, you get so much of it by just reading and studying yourself but then when you help other people to see it God really swings the door wide open and lets you see what's going on okay so this was written June 12 2021 whenever Clint you made this presentation to me and Clint was a contributor for years and years if you if you have old newsletters you'll see Clint down the survival section um, he loves to write like I do and here he's writing on scriptural topic so more and more of you are seeing Gog and Magog associated with this war I talk about that in my update reports and the common mistake the common common mistake is let me see if any of these diagrams help me to yeah write this diagram right here the common mistake that people make today is that they take the blood witness part remember Christ came in water and in blood not in water only but in water and in blood the spirit testifies to the truth of the spirit the water and the blood and the three are into the one the spirit the water the spirit the water and the blood there's a veil here there's a veil here you don't, you're supposed to cut straight the word of truth into rows if you're going if you're dissecting the Greek and these veils exist here for a reason there are even veils within the Pauline epistles first Corinthians verses 11 12 13 there are veils there water witness veils on purpose God put them there on purpose and those of us that are mixing the water in the blood you're defiling the blood when you're mixing the blood with the water you're defiling the water kingdom doctrine grace, grace doctrine so the most of the professing Bible prophecy experts 
in the world today, the ones that have been around, they are mixing together the water and the blood. They don't even realize it. They're confusing how the day of the Lord begins with how the day of the Lord ends. The prophets all see how it ends. Daniel, Zechariah, Jeremiah, they see uh, Joel, Joel 2. Christ quotes Joel 2 in Matthew 24. Matthew 24 is about what happens over here. Paul describes the destruction that is here. The black star came back here in the days of Noah, in the days of Moses. It's coming today for the prophet of Acts 3. Start at verse 19. Then, and Paul describes how the day of the Lord comes as a thief of the night. It comes as a thief of the night because God didn't allow any of these prophets to see how it starts. He didn't tell any of the prophets about the body of Christ, about our mystery gospel, about us judging the world and the angels, our mystery translation to immortality. None of that is shared with the Old Testament prophets. The only reason that, I mean, it's enfolded, the truth is enfolded, spirit, blood, and water in the 39 books, 3 times 13. It's enfolded in there. So if Paul goes back to the Old Testament, remember he's a Pharisee, if he goes back in the Old Testament and says this applies to you, then you can apply it. Otherwise, those who received God's word back then saw nothing about the body of Christ. Nothing about our mystery gospel. Nothing about Christ coming and dying for our sins and being raised from the dead. See, if, if God would have told the Old Testament prophets, the devil would have known and he would have never crucified them. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians 2, start at 6. They never would have crucified the Lord of glory if they knew. They didn't know because the prophets didn't know either. That's what Paul, why Paul's testimony is so important. And he uses the term mysterion 20 times in his 13 epistles. Peter, John, James, the names with their books, use it zero times because they're talking about and writing about prophecy being fulfilled. Prophecy that was prophes prophesied back here being fulfilled in, over here in the spirit in the water sections. The blood section is guarded by those veils. The Old Testament people don't see it. The, even the kingdom disciples don't see it because God shields it from them deliberately and on purpose. So those of us who see it, we are lucky, chosen by God to be able to see it. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Blessed are those in heaven that see the things that I'm showing you here and understand it. But more blessed are you guys that see it walking through this evil age in the, under the, in the valley of the shadow of darkness. The devil going about destroying. Okay, so those of you receiving the newsletter, this is newsletter number two, you're going to do that through the 2022 Dropbox folder. Those of you that are part of the mystery program, did I go down and show you? No, I didn't. How to subscribe. You subscribe. See this black star section? Mystery report section. If you want a mystery report, you can want access to these newsletters. Not just 2022 newsletters, 2020, 2021, and 2019. All the way back to the first one, number one in 2019, you get access to when you subscribe. When you subscribe to the Black Star program, you only get 2022. You can get the old newsletters that are archived upon request. And it's how to do that is in your 2022 Dropbox phone link notification email. But you get all the newsletters here back to the beginning and just start with the first one and go back to the first video. And there's a breadcrumb trail laid down for you so you can see it. If God's chosen you to see it, you're going to see it. And then when you subscribe, you get a free copy of my book, The Mystery Explained, Spirit, Blood, Water. 555 pages, 80 color-coded diagrams. So when you subscribe, just for $25 per year, it's just one payment per year, then you're going to get my book, book The Mystery Explained, attached to that, and you can begin. This is a manual. And there's a step-by-step -step process. You're going to, there are exercises that are in there that's going to help you to see it. Now remember, all I have is seeds. God's got to cause the growth. There's plenty of water in the videos and in my book, The Mystery Explained. Seeds, water galore. God's got to cause growth. Just make that perfectly clear to you. Okay, let's get back over here. Okay, th um, this is what Clint is writing about the last day's timing detail. This chapter further looks into timing and mainly to mainly determine when Babylon USA will be destroyed. Okay, problem is, the Old Testament prophets, they don't, Daniel, he doesn't see 
the United States. He doesn't see anything inside this mystery period that God shielded. He kept hid so it could be revealed to Paul. So you can't go in the Old Testament and find it. You can go to the Old Testament and find out what's going to happen at the end of the age. Especially from Daniel. He's going to count backwards. He sees exactly what's going on. So, without getting into a lot of detail, then this entire work is going to be about water witness stuff. Water witness prophecies being fulfilled at the end of the age. And an interpretation that mixes the water and the blood together. So if you're writing about, if you're using these verses from Daniel and you're writing about what's going to happen at the end of the age, you are, are in the right context. If you're trying to apply it today to this mystery time that none of the prophets see, then you, you're, you're providing commentary that's, well, about 3,600 years too early. The people that, that the prophecies apply to are kingdom disciples who obey the gospel of the kingdom. That's what it says, Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall go to the whole world and then the end will come. We don't preach the gospel of the kingdom today, guys. We preach the word of the cross. Are, do, are we repenting and wa baptizing in water for the kids of sins? That's the water gospel. No. We have one baptism. We're baptized into Christ on the cross at Calvary when we obey the gospel. The gospel. That Jesus Christ is Lord. God raised him from the dead. Our redemption is in his shed blood. Our forgiveness is through his sins. I mean, our forgiveness is through his shed blood. That's the gospel. Very simple. The simplicity of the cross is that but whenever you start saying and then you have to pray this prayer and then you have to be water baptized and then you have to repent and then you have to do this you're adding works from the gospel of the kingdom right into the word of the cross and then you're giving people a heavenly way to go straight into the lake of fire adding one work to the gospel changes everything because it's for by grace you save through faith that not of yourself it's a gift of god not by works lest anyone should boast for we are his Workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. So, again, without going into a lot of, without going into a lot of detail, I'm just going to get right here to the reply. Hi, Clint. Thank you for writing. You have done a lot of research in Bible prophecy. Please allow me to use two diagrams from the Mystery Explained to show you your interpretations to be 3,000 years early. This is from the Mystery Explained. This divides the Bible. See the second veil? See this first veil? This is God's Word, and this is a prophecy mystery timeline. The mystery part is within the two veils. This is the holy place of the Bible. Thirteen books. Thirty-nine books of the Old Testament, just like the timeline that I showed you of the prophets looking over into here. And this is where the day of the Lord that's about to start. See the body raptured? First Thessalonians 4. Start at verse 13. And then we're comforting each other with those words. And then in the very next chapter, it comes the destruction comes suddenly like the birth pangs upon a woman with child. That's the pole shift that's about to happen. We're taken just before that. Okay, so everything, everything you are sharing is fulfilled during the day of the Lord. Shown over on the right in the blue section of the diagram. The day of the Lord was trying to begin with John the Baptist from the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, the Twelve, the Holy Spirit from the day of Pentecost. John the Baptist received the Holy Spirit from his father, we're talking about Zacharias, who received the Holy Spirit when entering the Holy of Holies. On the Day of Atonement, the, the, the Jews on the Day of Atonement, one of the priests go behind the veil, they tie a, a rope to his leg, he goes behind the veil. Only one time per year does anybody do that. And all of the priests are brought up and they all are, they have a lot. They put it in. And then they shake it around and they pull out. Whoever it is goes back there. The reason for that is to ensure that everybody is prepared. But God chooses one and the one that goes back there. And they put the leg on there because if he's not right with God, he goes behind the veil, he falls over dead. They got to pull him out and draw lots again. So, John the Baptist's father was chosen that year, and then the Holy the the he was told by the angel what was going to happen, and Lot didn't um, Lot um, Zacharias didn't believe him, and so he was struck dumb until the Holy Spirit went into his son in his mother's womb. 
So if you go back to Genesis 1-2 where the Spirit's moving over the surface of the waters, you follow and then through Melchizedek, the incarnation of the Holy Spirit, and then the temple with the Holy Spirit above the mercy seat between the wings of the cherubs, right? The cherubim. Okay. And then the Holy Spirit here is leaving the temple and it's going with John the Baptist through his father. And then John the Baptist is going to give that to Christ at his baptism. And then Christ is going to give it to the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. And then the Israel, they do not accept the gospel of the kingdom. That's evidenced by the, the, the killing of Stephen with their own hands. In Acts 6 and 7, then Saul standing there, and then Saul becomes Paul, which that's not that he becomes that. Paul is his Roman name. Everybody there has a Roman name, and they have their Jewish name. If they're Jewish, Paul being a citizen of Rome. So he was born Paul. But then he, since he's a Pharisee and his Jewish tradition, then his name is Saul to this group, and it's Paul to that group. It's not that he's, his name changed. Like others, like Abram and Abraham, name changed, not Paul. So anyway, um, there's a thread of the Holy Spirit that runs all the way from Genesis 1-2 to Revelation 22-17 when the Spirit says, come. This is a transition of that Holy Spirit being passed like a baton from person to person to person. So it moves from Peter, John, and James to Paul and Barnabas and Titus. So the meeting in Acts 15, Galatians 2, the gospel of the uncircumcised that Paul teaches to the Gentiles, the gospel of the circumcised, which is the gospel of the kingdom, preached by Peter, John, and James, two separate, totally separate churches, two different dispensations, households. Okay, so this is my descriptions of the uh, baton, the Holy Spirit being passed, that I just explained to you, then uh, raised up. God raised up Paul, and he gave him the revelations, the revelation of the mystery, our gospel, our mystery church, our mystery translation. All of those things that were kept secret and now revealed. So this is the diagram that I just showed you, and that I'm using to uh, stand with Daniel, Zechariah, Joel, Jeremiah, etc., in the Old Testament. On the left, to realize they see very well unto the day of the Lord, but they see nothing inside this mystery time right here where they're moving through now. If God had shown the prophets, then they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. So your commentary and predictions apply to the end of the age. When and most, How many commentators do you listen to that says that think this is the end, this is the end, this is the end of the age? The age is not. This is how the day of the Lord starts. We're witnesses of it. It's about to happen with, at the Black Star's coming. That divides time from time. Before Noah, people lived to be over a thousand years old. After Noah, 120. After Moses, 70. After this prophet that's coming in the black star, people are going to live to be a thousand years again. Longer than that. Till the end of the age. This is God's stuff, all of it. The black star is part of the program. The red section of the diagram contains Christ's blood ministry, where the blue section contains Christ's water ministry. Mixing the wisdom given him, the mystery, with the prophecy defiles the mystery and prophecy. Look again at the first diagram above to see the first veil and the separation. I've already shown that to you guys. This is where, right there, those that are distorting the wisdom given him, that is the mystery, are doing so to their own destruction. It's happening to pro modern day prophets right now. They think that they're modern day prophets. They think they're doing a justice by explaining how prophecy is being fulfilled when a prophecy has not been fulfilled from God's word for almost 2,000 years. I know. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? The truth is stranger than fiction. I'm telling it to you. Right here, and using scriptures, and you guys can check it out for yourself. Don't believe anything anybody says on the internet. When you see somebody that has something that looks you know, right or wrong or whatever, go check it out. Read the verses. Read the commentary. Again, everything you have presented is accurate for the end of the age, but we are witnesses of how the day of the Lord begins for those things to be fulfilled later in the timeline. Okay, so that's the first, that's what I had ready for you guys last weekend. But this didn't seem like enough. So, the call went out to Peter and to Don and Gary and David 
questions. Please send me questions. I said, okay. So Peter sent me some sent me this. And uh one of the main reasons for following your teaching, uh, God has shown you, is that it testifies of Germantria. And you have said you're a numbers man. Yes, sir. I'm a numbers man. For sure. Love math since I could stand up and walk. Yet, I have not heard you talk about this. So, then you're going to get into numerology and 888s and 3024s and 37s and things like that. And so, God bless you. Maybe God's showing you something that is vital, important. But for me, God's numerology begins with the number one. And then two. And then three. And then four. And it goes up that way. And it doesn't start at 7,000 and go backwards. For me. Okay. So so where do I stand with, God, with God's numbers? If you go to ChristianForums.com and Google Tarot and numerology and things like that. And I've written extensively on these topics beginning in 2004 over there okay uh, then I misinterpreted what was said here and Peter wrote to me and said well you didn't quite understand this question right here and I apologize for that so this is uh, just another one is Adam and 22 generations in Israel and 7,000 and about you know taking account the name changes so if you could answer a second question I have not heard you so far talk about the other nine disciples where do they fit in to uh, the two churches, the two gospels, the two churches, and so on and so forth. So thank you for writing. And so God's numerology is quite complex, requiring a volume of its own as a complement to seeing God's wisdom hidden in plain sight. Using his three witnesses of spirit, that is number one. Every spirit witness in the Bible has the number one attached to it. Every blood witness in the Bible has the number two attached to it. Every water witness has the number three. So the blood witness is the third witness who is last that is made first. Christ talks about it often. The last that's made first. And what the way that works is the spirit witness always comes first. So John the Baptist, he's a spirit witness. He had to come before Christ. He had to. Then here comes Christ, the blood witness. And then the water witness. That's the twelve. Okay. But the blood witness is the one that's begotten. So when you have the spirit witness that comes first, well, originally first you have a singularity that's a circle. Then out of that singularity comes the water witness, like Eve coming out of the side of Adam, or the Holy Spirit coming out of the side of the Word. So when you're looking at Adam and Eve and the Eve, the helper, coming out, you know that Christ calls the Holy Spirit the helper, because it's the water witness for the Father and the Son. Like Eve is the water witness servant for Adam and her seed. The same way. So God is teaching us about the Holy Spirit by using Adam and Eve. Where Eve is the water witness in that position. Make sense? So once you realize, you see the charts multiple charts of spirit, blood, and water witnesses that emerge from singularities, then you can look at the, the spirit witnesses and realize they're all testifying about one another at the same time. Every blood witness is begotten. Every one of them testifies for all other blood witnesses in the entire Bible. They're all, once you've read the Bible a bunch of times and you hear their testimony, you can hear them all testifying at the same time. All the water witnesses are the same. The earth is a water witness. Man in his relationship to God, the spirit witness, and the son who's a blood witness. So he's, that's why woman is the image and glory of man that Paul teaches, 1 Corinthians. And women pray with their head covered because of the angels. That covering is the first veil. When you understand the veils and the dividing and the woman is the servant, the water witness, the, the weaker vessel, so you have a spirit and you have a body. Water witness, the weaker vessel. The woman in the relationship of man, her seed, and woman is the weaker vessel. The same way. Man is the spirit witness, the image and glory of God. The spirit witness. Woman is the image and glory of man. Or the image of man. Doesn't use the word glory in there in 1 Corinthians. So anyway... Here's the diagram, the other one that I used above, showing you the three parts. 
And this is where God's numerology comes in. Because God is number one, two, and three. So what do you get when you add one plus two plus three? Six. Six is the number of man. One plus two plus three. What well, one plus two plus three? And so you see how the blood witness comes last? Because whenever there's a there's a father and there's the Holy Spirit that overshadows the Father, I'm talking about Luke one thirty five. The power from on high overshadows the Holy Spirit in the woman so that the son is begotten so you have the father you have the holy spirit but whenever they overlap the son is begotten so the son is then so the son really has a number three because he came last but he's made first ahead of the water witness so he actually so then instead he has the number three because he came last one two three but he's made first ahead of the water witness behind the spirit witness so he has the number two one plus two plus three so ministers many will tell you that six is the number of man but they do not have a clue why why six is the number of man ask your minister why six is the number of man and he's not gonna be able to tell you even though it's it's accepted universally but the reason is because spirit witnesses are one water uh, blood witnesses are two Water witness are three. One plus two plus three. So no matter which we're talking about, God to come, God who is, God who was, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, heaven, seven, earth, man, woman, seed, no matter who it is, combined their number is six. And they all have the same image of a man. This is the image of a man. I'm looking at right here. The Holy of Holies, Scriptures, God, the Word, you, me. We all have the, we all have the image of a man. And this template, this numerology, explains why homosexuality is an abomination to God. Man has a number one, right? Woman has a number three. And that begets the seed. You, put, you take the man and the man and the woman and the woman begets nothing. Romans chapter one. Enough said on that. But there's a reason, numerology and scriptural reason for the order of things to be done in the image and glory of God, which is the image of man. So whenever, for example, whenever um, there's one God and there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus, that first Timothy two, five, that man, Christ Jesus is not a human being, man. It's this man, father, my father, who art in heaven, the son and the Holy spirit, Christ Jesus, image of a man. So the image of a man is not talking about a human being. It's talking about the one, two, three image of a man. Okay. So then I go into the uh, numerology. The uh, He wants to know about the, the nine apostles. Those nine apostles are pretty important because if you look in the scriptures, Matt, Matthew, what is it, chapter 10, going to uh, start at verse 2. And the first is Peter. So you have Peter, John, and James. Well, you notice they come in groups. And you're going to see that they're in groups so that Peter has three witnesses, John has three witnesses, and James have three witnesses. So those three witnesses are for them because Christ's three witnesses are Peter, John, and James. Peter, John, and James. So if you look at a book that I read before I read the Bible the first time was Thinking in Destiny by Harold Waldwin Percival. And in one of the chapters, he's going to go into the Immaculate Conception and the Anatomy of a Thought. And the Anatomy of a Thought is the precise numerology and image of what I'm showing you right here. Christ in the middle. He's emotional. It's called an astral elemental, if you will, using this terminology. And then Peter, John, and James around them. And then their three apostles around them, their three disciples with them. And then when you take that in your hand and you hold it, you're looking at the anatomy of a thought. So that thought comes into your mind undeveloped. It just begins as something akin to an emotion, akin to. And then it grows a leg and another leg and another leg, the three primaries for the anatomy of this thought. It's, it's going out like a sun it's, and it's returning to you. It's going out like a sun again. 
and it's returning to you and it grows this leg each time until it's complete and it has the same anatomy as Christ and it's three disciples and then each of them having three disciples if you could see it that's what it would look like and then uh, from the time of Adam this is what I get wrong because um, just another one is Adam in the 22 generations in Israel and then the time from Adam Genesis 2 8 is far greater so I was looking at this number of years I was focused on the years and actually my commentary is going to be wrong on this but the um, the Adam and Eve are the two olive trees from Zechariah 4 11 through 14 everybody else is, that's a seventh day person that means you have a place a part of Adam and Eve's recent incarnation in Genesis 3 21 the skins are put in skins that's when they were thrown down out of heaven because prior to that everything from Genesis 2 7 to Genesis 3 20 is heavenly they're thrown down and the way back is guarded by the cherubim the Adam looks through the wings of the cherubim and he's screaming at the Lord God who is the Lamb of God who made him and he's asking him my God my God why have you forsaken me that's his words Christ repeated those words on the cross because he was there for the first Adam but the first Adam couldn't make atonement for his own sins only the Lord God that made him could John the Baptist testifying for the earth Jesus Christ the Word incarnate the Lord God of the Old Testament incarnate the Lamb of God incarnate doing what God sent him to do to die on the cross for our sins to go into the earth so whenever Christ died on the cross we died with him because we've been baptized into his body that's what it means when we obey the gospel our one baptism the Holy Spirit baptizes into his body so when he dies we die when God raises him from the dead he raises us from the dead God seats him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus we're seated there too because we're members of his body that's the mystery of Christ mystery of our gospel many people can't see it God hides it from them deliberately So then um, Christ three witnesses, yeah, Peter, John, and James, that's what I'm explaining, and then using this diagram, same pattern of uh, God, heaven, and earth. So this is uh, the moral of the story when Christ taught using the parable of the mustard seed. Christ is not teaching that men would move mountains from here to there. Christ was teaching that Peter, John, and James had no faith, not even the size of the smallest of all seeds so if you hold a if you hold a mustard seed in your on the tip of your finger it looks like a speck of pepper it's so little Christ said that their faith wasn't even that much but if they had that much they could move mountains not that they again not that they were going to move mountains but saying that they had no faith at all so whenever we get to the ages of the ages to the very end the final three kingdom disciples that are going to join us in Christ Jesus through their marriage supper of the Lamb is going to be James, then John, then the scratch straggler. At the very end is going to be Peter. He's the least in the kingdom of heaven Christ talks about. He that's least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. He's talking about John the Baptist. John the Baptist being the incarnation of Adam who represents this entire universe. So what Christ is saying is this entire universe is a mustard seed compared to the least in the kingdom of heaven, Peter. Because every member of heaven, of Genesis 1-1, is almost infinite. Almost infinite. Every host. Which means, in comparison, this entire universe is like a drop of water. That's what Christ is teaching once you see the three witnesses. And then you realize that the first, that's Peter, just mentioned it to you, the first, Peter, is actually the last. That's going to join us in Christ Jesus at the end of all the ages. And this is the diagram that I showed you too. God is teaching the heavenly authorities his manifold wisdom through our mystery church, the body of Christ, that the power of God's grace is greater by far than all the works of men and angels combined through all the ages. Really, really great stuff. 
So then this is the one that came in this morning. And uh, to round off this mystery report newsletter. And uh, if I can assume after you said that we are repeating over and over again now what happened in the infinite realm, then my apologies. There was a comma here. This was all one sentence and I divided it. Um, was it down to Satan in dwelling in us all, our outer flesh, to fulfill our sinful nature whilst our inner man looks to boot him out via Christ's blood. Apologies for the long sentence. So, this is this is a when you ask me a question it's only you know one long sentence but you're whenever my answers are drafted for the newsletter then it's my goal is to try to help those that are on the basics on the water on the milk on the meat right the milk and the bread babes and those that are more higher up you know the Gary's and the David's on the other end of the spectrum that's my goal, and so you might think I'm going. I'm in a roundabout way answering your question. That's my goal anyway. So this explanation providing um, the explanation providing the correct answer requires us to transition ourselves out of this physical realm and across heaven, the heaven realm, and into God's infinite realm where you are gods. That says the reason is because of the context here. I can assume that you said repeating over and over again what happened in the infinite realm see so what happened in the infinite realm and what's happening here so many people are going to have difficulty transitioning this is John's vision looking through back into the infinite realm where he sees four living creatures one here and three here he's looking through heaven Christ the face of the man this is from Revelation the other three living creatures God who is, God who was, and God who is to come. The lion, seeing forward, God to come. God who was, the bullock, protecting the rear, which is the past. And then God who is, as the eagle, all seeing. Every single thing happening in this universe at this very moment, he sees it all. So, my goal is, is through my commentary that's coming up is to try to help you transition from the earth where we are in physical bodies. We have a spirit, soul, and a body. And to our almost infinite heaven realm host in Christ Jesus, seated in heavenly places. And then into the ages to come. I mean, I'm sorry. The ages, the perfect ages of Genesis 1-1. To realize what that is and how that fits in the context. And then back into God's infinite realm and the only realm that's real. So if you're, if you've ever seen the movie, The Thirteenth Floor, if you haven't seen it, check it out. Douglas Hall, the world that he wakes up in in the first, at the beginning, is heaven. The world that he goes to in 1927, that's on the thirteenth floor, that simulation, is earth. The only realm that's real, God's infinite realm, is where he ends up at the very end of the movie. Just to give you an idea. So this is, if you're a Matrix fan, then this realm and this realm are both Matrix. Both of them. And this Matrix exists inside of this Matrix. And the only realm that's real is over here. But you've been, well, you call it what you want. I'll read it to you from the verse, you know, from, the, from the scriptures. But you're a God here. I'm a God here. I incarnate inside of you. You incarnate inside of me. Look around to realize you know everybody. We just don't have remembrance of it here. Most of us don't. And we, the things that we're doing, we've already done before. Twice. Once in the infinite realm, and then in the almost infinite realm where Michael the Archangel is fighting with the dragon. We're there, too, fighting right now. The hosts are so big that there's a time differential. So the dragon and Michael are fighting back in the Genesis days. And it's moving like Leo constellation in the Virgo constellation in slow motion. They're always in motion. Leo, and they're, all the suns that make that up, they're all in motion, but they look the same to us. And they're moving in super slow motion. Heaven is that way. It's moving. We could look on the screen of heaven. We'd see 
gigantic host moving extremely slowly. If we look at the screen of the infinite realm, you'll see it frozen motionless. From our perspective of the created realms, there's no such thing as time nor space in God's infinite realm. It's infinite. Each host is infinite. The members of each of your body, you have a body there that God, you, that God created you infinite. Members of your body are infinite. It's difficult to even wrap, begin to wrap your head around what I'm trying to say, isn't it? The difference between this and this is great. Drop of water, and this is like the ocean. But the difference between this added to this is a drop of water comp compared to the infinite, to, uh, well, it's almost infinite universe. The whole universe. This realm that's real. Heaven and earth, time and space exist here. Time doesn't exist here. Angels and men and women, and animals and all that exist here. They don't exist here. What exists here are all singularity expressions. They don't have a physical body. They don't have a spirit. They don't have a soul. They're all the same thing. So look at hosts that are here being divided as if light going through a prism. The light shines through and then you get a spirit. You get a father part, a Holy Spirit part, and a son part. And then the light goes on through and you have a, a spirit part, a body part, a soul part here in this in this realm that we're in right now. So the concepts of, you know, you've heard the verse that flesh and blood can't inherit the kingdom of God. Paul says there's no such thing as male or female in heaven. No such thing as male or female. Angels and the woman is back inside the man. The man's back inside the angel and living souls dwell in heaven. No such thing as of as male, female, or nothing it doesn't even make sense. Singularity expressions are created. A whole world full, a universe full of singularity expressions are created. Perfect. They're done. They do not reproduce. Everyone that's ever going to be born is created at the same time. That reproduces what's going on in God's infinite realm. Nobody born, nobody dies. Everybody's made perfect. So the fact that we have angels and men means the universe is broken. Relativity and quantum physics do not reconcile because we're looking just from our earthly domain into the water witness realm. Relativity and quantum physics do reconcile in heaven. Make sense? Okay, so remember that remember that God's kingdom, that, that the kingdom of God in God's infinite realm, far left, is the only realm that is real. Heaven and earth are mere incarnations, created for the purpose of restoring one son of God, we know in scripture as Adam. And whenever you read through the Pauline epistles, you're going to see a common phrase, adopted as sons, adopted as sons. Because in, in, the, in God's word, there's one Son of God that has a big S. That's Jesus Christ. And there's one Son of God, Luke 3, 38, that has a little S. And that's Adam. Everybody else is a member of their body. In the earth, you're Adam's body. Member of Adam's body. In the highest heaven, you're a member of Christ's body. And in the infinite realm, you're a member of God's body. And that's it. Outside of that, there is no existence. That's the, the truth in a nutshell. So then on one side, you're going to have, which I'll show you by the end, you're going to have those that are the righteous, the children of the light, that are in Christ Jesus, and then you're going to have the antithesis of us, the members of the devil's body, the Cains, the sons of disobedience, the sons of darkness. They're going into the lake of fire. That's a heaven thing, almost infinite realm, on the opposite side. So we, in the Lamb, we can look over and see them, as Scripture says, in the lake of fire. Okay, so um, instead of trying to answer that long sentence, then I began just by cutting it off at the beginning. If I can assume, after you have said that we are repeating over and over now what happened in the infinite realm, so stop it right there. Please forgive me for breaking off your sentence. Don't like to do that, but it, if it, unless it's going to add clarity to what we're trying to do. So being a debater of God's word for decades, then um, going through the process with 
thousands of people, then there are all kinds of tricks that people play on you. Ad hominem attacks, rather than attacking this topic um, and breaking up your sentence so they can take it out of context. So this is a ploy that people use, but I'm doing it to be, for clarity. So I'll let you know. So um, Ecclesiastes 1, 9 through 11. It's the most quoted verses in Ecclesiastes. What has been is that what will be. And what has been done is that is what will be done. So there is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which one might say, see this is new. It has already existed for ages which were before us. There is no remembrance of the earlier things and of the later things as well which will occur. There will be no remembrance among them, a remembrance of them among those who will come later still. The ages which were before us is a phrase pointing directly to the perfect ages contained within Genesis 1 1. So if you look at Genesis 1 2, it says the darkness was upon the face of the deep, right? So we're talking about. So we're still living in the same evil age from Galatians 1 4. We're living in the same evil age that began in Genesis 1 2. That's the feature, dominant feature, characteristic of this age is the darkness that fell. Well, Ecclesiastes says plural, perfect ages, which tells us that ages existed in Genesis 1 1 when God created the heaven and the earth. So the goal there was to for God to reproduce infinite realm events so you can't do that in one age it's impossible because infinite trying trying to transcribe something infinite using written language would require volumes and volumes and volumes and volumes it requires multiple incarnations it requires multiple ages that's what was happening then for god to reproduce the events of adam's demise in the infinite realm that's what the satanic rebellion led to the need for Adam's death in the infinite realm. So Isaiah 53, written in the past tense, goes all the way back into the infinite realm. The need for a Savior in the infinite realm. You say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jesus Christ is the Savior. Yeah, the incarnation of heaven reproducing what already happened. But God and his word are one in the infinite realm. And that's the way he's there right now. The host that was created to be the sacrificial lamb in the infinite realm is Adam. So you have a first Adam, like John the Baptist, and you have the last Adam, which is Christ. The first Adam and the last Adam were, are required to reproduce what happened in God's infinite realm. That's what's happening right here. So, um, this is the explanation. The ages which were before us is a phrase pointing directly to the perfect ages of Genesis 1 1 when God, heaven, and earth existed as perfect, complete, mature singularities. There was no such thing as men, women, angels, nor perfect um, in those perfect ages. Every singularity host was created by God through his word to be perfect, complete, mature, to exist for the perfect age where nobody was born and no such thing as there's no such thing as children. There's no concept of children or anything like that because everybody's made. The phrase to best characterize these perfect immortal hosts is living, a living soul, like Adam created in Genesis 2 7. In the same likeness with Eve and her seed in him. So in Genesis, in, in Genesis 2 7, there's no such thing as Eve or seed, there's only Adam. Just like with the Word. There's no such thing as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. There's, you don't see any Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Word. They're all the same thing. So that's what I'm trying to get through to you. Is that spirit, soul, and body, broken. Singularity expression, living soul, they're all one thing. So then, um, it, se it seems like it's going to be helpful to Use what Christ taught his disciples to help you see the bigger picture of what's going on here. They recognize him, Peter recognized him as the son of the living God. And then he says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall have been, 
bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall have been loosed in heaven. Then he gave his disciples strict orders that they were not to tell, they were to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is, uh, many of you have seen this verse and some of you have not, you didn't even know this one existed because most people stopped quoting. That's why I left it on here from Matthew 16. But uh, if you wonder why would Christ tell them to tell no one that he's the Christ? Why would they do that? Didn't they have to go out and preach the gospel? Thing is, there was a heavenly Messiah walking around, and there was an earthly Messiah walking around. David, rocking around. John the Baptist. He was there to set up the earthly kingdom. He is the Messiah of the earthly kingdom. Jesus Christ is the Lord of heaven. Heaven is his throne. Earth is his footstool. So when you have on earth as it is in heaven, just think of it as, as David, as the Lamb of God in heaven. On earth, David, as the Lamb of God in heaven. Those are only two of the three witnesses, too. So the binding and losing process of kingdom disciples, obeying the gospel of the kingdom, follows the same pattern as Christ teaches his disciples uh, the Lord's Prayer, saying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How many times have you guys heard that? On earth as it is in heaven. See, that's the loosening thing. On earth as it is in heaven. It's not that anything's being done here. It's being done here because that's the way it is in heaven already. So that's what Ecclesiastes is going on about. As it is in heaven, that's what's happening here. But then, those are only two of the three witnesses. Jesus is teaching the disciples using two of the three witnesses with the spirit witness missing. The larger truth is taught addressing the Almighty, saying, Your will be done on earth, water witness, as it is in heaven, blood witness, as it is in your infinite realm. See how that works? This infinite realm is the only realm that's real. Things are being done in heaven and then on earth as sp in spirit, blood, and water fashion. In that order. The bottom line here is that all choice and cause are tied to actions already taken in God's infinite realm, where we are being judged as we speak for active participants, victims or perpetrators, in the satanic rebellion. That is the eternal truth for all the ages taught in Hebrews 9.27. That's for a man to die once and then the judgment for every seventh day person, one incarnation per age. Six day people can incarnate a thousand times per age. They're under a different set of rules with direct dispensation with the Almighty on an evolutionary path spiraling upwards. That's how the members of Adam's body are being restored. The members, the brethren's I mean, Adam's brethren that are gods like him that incarnated inside of him. That's what you are. That's what I am. We are members of Adam's body. We died on the day that Adam died. The incarnation of gods in God's infinite realm. So yeah, you're a god in God's infinite realm. But you're still there. The you here is an incarnation. Because you incarnated inside of Adam. And then Adam got killed. And so now you, your incarnation was killed too. So to build Adam back up again. To restore Adam, then you, as a member of his body, must be restored too. All the six-day people, they have to be restored too. Dumpty Dumpty story, one individual cell at a time. Each of us is one of those cells. That's how it works. So it's going to take a lot of ages, a lot of restoring going on. Okay, so uh, your question is asked in context to God's infinite realm where the satanic rebellion took place before heaven and earth were called into existence. You continued, was it all down to Satan indwelling in us all, our outer flesh, to fulfill our sinful nature whilst our inner man looks to boot him out or uh, via Christ shed blood. Okay, so there's no such thing as human flesh and sinful nature in God's infinite realm where you are God's. Even the concepts of Christ and Christ's blood have no meaning in God's infinite realm where we are all infinite gods with members of our bodies and our brethren incarnate in us. So let me just stop right here for a second. Jesus Christ is the incarnation of the Lamb of God that's in heaven right now. Been there. 
He takes away the sin of the world. He's right in the middle of everything. Center of that throne. That's where Adam and Eve were before they were cast down. Right there before the Lord God who made them. The Lamb of God. The Lamb of God from Revelation 7, 17 in the center of the throne is the same as the Lord God of Genesis 2, 4 that began his consecration works. He's standing up as a priest. Seventh day. Okay. So. Remember that Satan is an infinite realm anointed cherub who covers who God created to keep secrets from his sons of God, which led to Satan's pride and iniquity, unrighteousness being found in him from Ezekiel 28. The dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are Satan's three witnesses in heaven with the devil, the son of destruction, and their false prophet testifying for Satan in the earth. So Satan is an infinite realm thing. He can be characterized in heaven and earth as Satan can be, but that's not technically correct. The dragon is the spirit witness, the beast. You see how it works? Spirit, blood, water. So the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, spirit, blood, water. They do not exist in the infinite realm. They're all combined together in the Word. Make sense? So there's no such thing as the Son of God, of, of Jesus Christ in the infinite realm. He's God's Word. He's one with God. He's already there. That we are looking in this realm at incarnations of what's real in the infinite realm. Okay, so the battle between Michael the Archangel, I was explaining this earlier. It's taking place right now as we speak. Those heavenly hosts are almost infinite in the size of our teeny earth from our teeny earthly respect, uh, perspective, which means they are moving in super slow motion, like the constellations that are acting. The dragon is defeated and thrown to the earth in the pattern of on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in God's infinite realm, so that the devil and his minions are thrown into the lake of fire to complete the judgment process. The same fate will fall upon all of Cain's, all the Cain's born for all the ages to come as they join the devil in the lake of fire. Revelation 21.8 So what happened in the infinite realm here happens again here, happens again here. And the sons of disobedience end up here and thrown into the outer darkness. The worthless slaves, not really a reason to, to weeping and gnashing of teeth and all that. This is beyond that second veil. The thing is, eventually, all the things from here, the water witness part and the spirit witness part, they're going to be summed up inside this lake of fire. Eventually, they're all going to be in that lake of fire. By the time we get to the ages of the ages, the end of the ages, they're all going to be there. This is one of the final diagrams. In the once you see things going forward, then you see things going backwards. As if you're reading the New Testament, you're you're reading and thinking from left to right. In the Old Testament, it's the opposite. Everything's going the opposite way. All that said, our struggle, which sometimes semantics gets in the way, Peter, and sometimes, as you saw with your the last questions that you sent in, then semantics, you're saying one thing and I'm thinking something different. Sometimes I'm answering a question you didn't ask. That may be the case here, too. It's possible. All that said, our, in case that is, that's what this is about. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against powers, against the world forces of this darkness. That's from Ephesians. Against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's really what it's all about. Therefore, our spirits, souls, and bodies are microcosms of this creation, the heavens, heaven, and earth, where the struggle between the sons of light versus darkness plays out within our mortal bodies between the new inner man that Paul writes about and the old sinful fleshy nature so you're born with the old sinful fleshy nature the moment you obey the gospel then the seed is sown in your heart Christ in you and just like the little baby in the manger it's just a baby it just it starts off you keep feeding it you keep water feed and grow, 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 grow. Stay in God's word, particularly the Pauline epistles. That's going to feed the new man inside of you. Then the time comes where David and Goliath are just about the same size. They're ready to fight. And then the new nature overcomes the, the old nature. And then you begin having victory in your life. Walking strong, victory, victoriously. Helping other people. Breaking the bonds of the flesh and things like that. And then your works 
are spiritual, they earn you spiritual rewards for helping people. And that reduces the fleshy stuff, the wood, hay, and the straw that's put on the altar whenever we come before the judgment seat of Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.10. You want all the good stuff and eliminate the bad stuff. And the best way to do that, seeing God's hidden wisdom, was one of you wrote to me and said, well, what's the importance? What's, why? It's because we're in a competition. Paul says to run the race as to win. Do you want to be high up near Christ in the heavenly pyramid? That's our abode. Or do you want to be down on the bottom? You want a little apartment? Down on the bottom with the common stones? Or do you want a luxurious five-star place? That's more like a realm up top near Christ. Paul, Barnabas. The sons of light that are big and giant and glorious with scepters and you can go anywhere in the kingdom of God when you have the right stones on your chest plate. You get those stones by earning them. So seeing God's word is one thing. Get your rewards. Sharing that with other people like I'm doing right now. They get your rewards. Helping others. People that are not even my subscribers. People that, that come along on the internet to get whatever they can get for free. Being blessed by this. So you don't see me asking very er, ever, really. Asking for a donation or anything like that. I'd rather get it in heaven. Really would. Rather have it in heaven. So, um, those among us choosing light and truth and God and God's word and righteousness in God's infinite realm shall overcome to stand together in heaven and God's infinite realm in great unspeakable glory. While those among us choosing lies and Satan and his beast and unrighteousness in God's infinite realm will burn forever and ever in the lake of fire. In what has been done is what will be done fashion. The people do not wake up in their beds one morning and say, I'm going to be a Christian. It doesn't work that way. That stirring that's in your heart comes from what's in the far beyond. From your existence in God's infinite realm on things that's already been done. And God calls you. He sends the preacher to you. And the the faith to faith transaction, the, the preacher, like I did a little while ago, preached you the gospel. And then the Holy Spirit, boom. The faith of Jesus is the is the gift. The faith of Jesus is a thing that he gives to you. It's Romans chapter, what's verse 26? Chapter 3, verse 26. It says faith in Jesus. The Greek is the faith of Jesus. It's a possession. And so then the, the Holy Spirit of promise, the Spirit of God's word, those three witnesses, their diagrams in my book, goes into your, that's what becomes the new nature that's inside of you. The faith to faith transaction. Always remember it's the gospel that's the power of the God. It's the power of God for salvation to everybody who believes. It's the gospel, not God's foreknowledge. Not God's power. Not He's put... The power is in the gospel. That is what gets you baptized into Christ on the cross. That's what gets you seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what gives you a heavenly existence in that almost infinite realm from the very beginning. Because of the power of God. Because he can do that. He changes the whole heaven to include you at the start when you obey the gospel. Now that's what predestination really is. That Calvin never really understood in my view. So the, and then finally in closing, the um, elite globalists, even AI, collectively have no power in their hands. Any power they have comes from far beyond this universe. Everything is fixed and they can't change it. Just hold on a little bit longer because soon everything is changed in the twinkling of an eye. And we will be looking down on the toils of this life from great, 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 great glory. It's really a great thing. Some of us can see through the veil and see what's coming and it is glorious. Really, really is. Looking very much forward to it. So whatever you do, hope you're getting your food so that you're here for that great, whenever we're taken. When we're taken and then we're, we get our rewards, you're going to have an insignia on your chest plate that shows that you never saw death in the image of Elijah. You want that. There's going to be members of Christ's body that are already dead, lots of them. And many of them that are about to be taken. I'm going to be, that's, I'm taking my nano silver right now to stay healthy keep my immune system built up because i want to be there for that day the pestilence is everywhere we have to protect ourselves so uh there's all kinds of updates and things like that included with this newsletter 
appreciate your support very, very much. And um, if you want to become a newsletter subscriber, I showed you on the website how to do that. It's just $25 per year. You get access to all the newsletters from the beginning. Copy my book, The Mystery Explained. You get discounts on uh, merchandise here at tarot03.com. I hope that you're getting your food. They're going to try to starve you out of your houses and get you into FEMA camps and so that you're numbered among the dead instead of the living. We don't want that to happen. I don't want that to happen to you any more than you do. So there's plenty of reasons to prepare physically and spiritually for what we're going through right now. So share this video with others. I hope you will. And have them go down and watch the six introductory videos. And all they have to do is subscribe, $25 a year. You get a copy of my book. If you get the hard co hardcover version of my book, it's like 60 bucks because it is big and it has color-coded diagrams so you have to have the most expensive paper so it doesn't bleed through um, you can get a copy for a hundred dollars if you're inside the United States it's 135 it's the links down below in the mystery section or you can go to amazon.com you can get it you get a one that's been turned back in I think for about 44 bucks or something like that but uh, when the lights go off and you have a candle light then you can read the mystery explained it is going to feed your new nature inside assisting God's word my work God's work and then in the the uh, manual in the mystery explain then you're going to be shown how to build your own red folder with different sections that you add to as the new inner man in you learns and teaches you about seeing God's wisdom using his God's three witnesses of spirit blood and water it is really magnificent stuff appreciate support again get more information here at terrell03.com and I'll see you on the next mystery report Trying to get at least one done a month, doing my best.